Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today is August 13th, and I'll tell you what, this is the daily stand-up, and it is just a crazy time out there. Let's go through the top stories. We're burning more climate warming coal than ever. Why? I'll tell you why. Let's go to the next one. India's oil ministry wants windfall tax on petroleum products abolished. Uh, I think he's dead on right. It needs to go away. U.S. oil M&A spree set to surpass last year's size. We got a few clues coming around the corner. OPEC cuts oil demand growth estimates as China economy struggles. Um, OPEC knows what they're doing. They've got a few good ideas on this. No sign of elevated radiation at the Zavora nuclear power plant. Boy, I butchered that name up, but the... Uh, Ukrainian power plant that is controlled by the Russians is not leaking radiation. So that's a good thing. So let's go also to the last story here of the day. Why is the Strait of Hormoz a focus of worry again? Oh, there's a little bit going on around over there. So let's start off with this story here. We're burning more climate warming coal than ever. Why? I'll tell you what, when you take a look at this article, it is very interesting. It was on Bloomberg, and our feed picked it up. When you take a look at how they, uh, Javier Blas is an outstanding author there, and uh, he is a shout out to him. He has to ask a couple questions. How reliant is the world on coal? And it's still unbelievable. It's coal is 35% of the world's uh, uh, energy generation in 2023. Natural gas was second with 22%. Hydroelectric was 14 and nuclear was 9%. Uh, and then in 2006 through 2014, coal was 40%. So attributed, it's come down 5%, but it's still this next chart. Global coal demand says that it's peaking in 2024. I don't buy it. I think that this is actually wrong and you're going to see peak. We haven't seen peak coal yet. Coal is still going to be around a while. Developing countries, Javier uh, explains, developing countries value coal as cheap, convenient source of power so they can use to modernize their economies. Ding. Uh, and it is absolutely, I think, where the U.S. could really help solve climate emissions, if, if you were... And that is go out and sell our technology at a small profit, but sell how to deliver coal to uh, the rest of the world and, and do it cleanly. I think that you would get rid of energy poverty and and solve a lot of the problems. Anyway, two most populous nations face pressure to keep power flowing across the grid amid surging. That's China and India. And we're seeing nothing more than that. The country use uh, in 95 percent of the coal fire power plants in China in 2023. That's unbelievable. That's an amazing amount of information there. Let's roll over to India's oil ministry wants windfall tax on petroleum products abolished. Windfall pro uh, profits taxes are very much like sanctions. They never work as intended. And when we're looking at the UK and uh, you're looking at the UK is doing windfall profit taxes and trying to milk all the profit that they can out of oil, they're just accelerating their deindustrialization very fast. India needs to quit doing windfall profit taxes and the Indian oil minister asked the country's finance ministry to consider scrapping the windfall profit tax on petroleum products due to falling crude prices that India's broadcaster ET now reported exclusively on Monday. Um, and I agree as exports are becoming highly Remunerative, it is seen that with certain refiners are drying out their pumps in the domestic market. 
the taxes and the windfall profit taxes don't do anything and don't allow for any reinvestment into new equipment or uh, getting scrubbers put in or maintenance or any of those things. So they really do need to take a look and don't follow the UK. Get rid of any windfall profit taxes on oil and gas. If you want to know how to not do something, Look at Germany or the UK, New York or California. Um, you want to deindustrialize? Follow those folks. Let's go to the next one here. U.S. oil M&A spree is set to suppress, suppress, surpass next year's size. Last year, U.S. oil and gas companies announced several big deals in Veris. We'll love in Veris over there. Uh, it said in their report an M&A that it saw. $32 billion worth of deals announced in the second quarter of this year as the uh, sector consolidates further. One question arises, how will production change as the number of players on the shale uh, field shrinks? Michael and I talked about this yesterday on the podcast, and yesterday we talked about that we are increasing our oil production even with fewer people. And it's because of longer laterals, better efficiency. But when we take a look at the uh, Exxon $60 billion takeover of Pioneer Natural Resources and Chevron's $53 billion merger with Hess, um, I'll tell you what, it is a big one. And if we're going to see some more mergers coming around the corner, who is going to be the biggie? Let's take a look here. The third quarter also a strong start with a $5 billion acquisition of Grayson Mills by Devon Energy, a deal in the Balkan Shea, and the $1.1 billion acquisition of Point Energy Partners by uh, Vital Energy and Northern Oil and Gas. Love the folks over there at uh, Northern Oil and Gas. They are a well-run organization. So when we take a look at the energy efficiencies and operations, we are going to see some more more M&A activity, and you'll see it, uh, good management, good numbers. So keep an eye out. You can make some money out there. Let's go to OPEC here. Uh, OPEC cuts oil demand growth estimates as China economy struggles. There are some serious problems coming around the corner for China. OPEC cuts its uh, 2024 oil demand growth by 135,000 barrel per day due to weaker Chinese demand. I'm always reluctant to just put all of my eggs in the uh, I'm going to throw down and not produce uh, oil because of China. China will surprise you. Somebody else will pick up the demand, and it seems like demand has been fairly steady. Global oil demand is set to grow by 2.11 million barrels per day uh, in a healthy growth space. Total world demand is anticipated to reach 104 million barrels per day in 2024, bolstered by strong air travel demands, road mobility, including trucking as a healthy industrial construction. OPEC trimmed its 2025 demand growth forecast of 178, 1.78 million barrels per day, slightly lower than the 185 million barrels per day in the last. Global growth forecast is subject to many uncertainties. And I'll tell you what, I'm not sure how um, to rule in whether or not that China attacks or tries to annex Taiwan. That is still out there. And uh, we don't know how any of that's going to play into it. So I do respect the uh, folks over there at OPEC. They have a pretty good handle on things, but I'm not sure that I would bet all my marbles on whether or not China is going to slow down or not. No sign of elevated radiation at the Zephora, Zephora uh nuclear plant, uh, despite the fire. These reckless attacks endanger nuclear safety at the plant and increase the risk of a nuclear accident. They must stop now. Um, Russia's in control of the plant. The the I believe it's the four to six reactors are in standby mode. I do not believe that they are generating electricity. A uh, team was told by the nuclear plant of an alleged drone attack of the, one of the cooling towers located at the site. Uh, currently, the radiation indicators are normal, but as long as Russian terrorists remain control over the nuclear plant, the situation is not and cannot be normal. 
I don't Russia did not attack it. Why would they attack it if they're in control of it? And would why would Ukraine attack a, a thing? This whole thing reeks of why would Russia attack the Nord Stream pipeline when Putin said, actually, all we have to do is turn it off without having to do anything. So who attacked it? Don't know uh, why it was attacked. Uh it's not generating electricity and it's best to let nuclear reactors kind of sit there because when the war is over, you're going to want to turn those things back on. Let's let a nuclear reactor come back online no matter who wins the war. Sorry, I am not a war fan if you can't tell. So let's go here to the last story here. Why the Strait of Hormuz is a focus worry again? Well, Part of it is because uh, today is a religious holiday for uh, Israel, and they are pending an attack from uh, Iran. And then uh, the Strait of Hormuz is uh, shaped like an inverted V. The waterway connects the Persian Gulf to the Indian Ocean. Iran with its north and, and the United Arab Emirates and Oman to the south. It's 100 miles or 161 kilometers long and 21 miles wide at its narrowest point. That's not very far. Uh, and the shipping lanes each direction two miles wide. And this feeds into you've got Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Iran. Lots of oil goes rolling around through this, this area in and here. It's essential to the global oil trade. Tankers hauled almost 15.5 million barrels per day of crude and cond uh, condensate from Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Kuwait, and the UAE and Iran through the strait in the first quarter of 2024. Wow. That is a lot. 15.5 million barrels. That's a lot of tankers. And when we sit back and take a look, I am surprised that we're not seeing higher prices uh, on oil. Uh, at the time of this, uh, we were at about 80 some odd dollars right at that for oil. Let me check here for just a moment. And that the stock oil price is coming up. And we are at 79.65 for, wow, 79.11 and 79.64. So Brent and WTI, this is really weird. They are right there next to each other. The dollar is down just a little bit at a dollar three. Nat gas is at two dollars and eighty eighteen cents, uh, nineteen cents. So when we sit back and take a look. Uh, Saudi Arabia exports the most through the Strait of Hormuz, uh, and it's been recently diverting shipments by using a 746-mile pipeline across the kingdom to the Red Sea, avoiding the Strait of Hormuz, and it's sending 1.5 million barrels a day via its pipeline to the port of uh, through the Gulf of Oman. So if you can avoid it, avoid it. But uh, I'll tell you what, we are living in some crazy times here. So buckle up, please like, subscribe, share, uh, hug your pets, tell your pets, say, hey, we want to listen to the podcast. Got some fantastic guests lined up. I mean, we are covering global markets. We are covering oil and gas uh, information, energy trading, finance markets. Um, if you are buying or selling oil and or natural gas and or LNG, please reach out at energynewsbeat.co forward slash trading desk and uh, reach out and uh, we will get in touch with you if you need to buy or sell oil. And uh, anyway, we'll have a great day. We will talk to you guys soon.